John Gotti was one of the most infamous mob bosses in Mafia history. Even people who aren't familiar with Mafia stories have heard of this notorious figure. He was an extravagant man who defied the law, even when he was orchestrating a brutal murder. The Gambino family of the modern era looks a lot different than it did in the 1980s when John Gotti and his brother were running the show. While the Gambino family does try to keep its affairs out of the public eye, they were the center of an investigation in 2023 that caught the public's attention. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what happened to the Gambino family after John Gotti died. We'll explore how his reign of power changed the infamous crime family and where they stand today. Stay tuned for the full story. Before we get into the current state of the Gambino family, let's go over the background of John Gotti. Throughout his era, he was known as the Teflon Don, the Dapper Don, Crazy Horse, and many other nicknames. John Gotti and his brother got involved in crime at a young age, likely because they grew up in poverty. He began running errands for a Gambino Capone as a teenager, which is how he got involved with the crime family. Previous Gambino bosses, Carlo Gambino and Paul Castellano, upheld traditional mafia values. They prided themselves on earning money through business deals and wanted to stay far away from the drug trade. But John Gotti saw a lot of power and money through drug trafficking. Power was something that John Gotti wanted more of. He ended up orchestrating the murder of Paul Castellano in 1985. With Paul out of the way, John Gotti was appointed Gambino family boss. The way he ran the crime family was far different from the previous bosses. John Gotti made a point of drawing attention to himself and leading through fear. While many people feared him, the Gambino family was the most powerful of the New York crime families during his era. It is believed that they had an annual income of $500 million. In 1989, John Gotti was arrested for a previous assault. He was let out on a $100,000 bail, but this was only the beginning of his legal troubles. The FBI bugged his apartment and was able to record sensitive conversations about planning a murder and fixing the jury for an upcoming trial. By December 1990, the authorities had enough evidence to plan a raid, where they arrested John Gotti and two other accomplices. By 1992, he was found guilty and sentenced to prison. Despite trying, he was never released. In 1998, he was diagnosed with throat cancer, which he passed away from in 2002. For many years, Salvatore Gravano, aka Sammy the Bull, was John Gotti's underboss. This was the man who was supposed to take over if anything happened to the Dapper Don, but one major falling out turned all of that around. After the bugging, John Gotti was in a hot mess. He knew what was on those tapes was really bad, so he allegedly had the plan to make Sammy the Bull take the fall. According to Salvatore, John Gotti expected him to be the sacrificial lamb for the Mafia. If Sammy the Bull took the fall, then John Gotti would get off free. But that wasn't what happened. Sammy the Bull flipped sides and became an informant for the FBI. Not only did this cause a rift with John Gotti, but it also meant that he was able to cut ties permanently with the Gambino crime family. Without Sammy the Bull to take over the family, the power went to John Gotti's brother, Peter Gotti, aka the dumbest Don. He didn't have the same sense of leadership as his brother. With Peter Gotti in charge, finances started to fade and rivals began to overtake the family. On top of that, the dumbest Don was imprisoned in 2003, making it difficult for him to control the crime family. By 2011, Domenico Cefalu was promoted to Gambino family boss. This put an end to the Gotti era and brought back a sense of traditional mafia values. It is believed that Domenico Cefalu still stands as the Gambino family boss today. Domenico has a long history with the Gambino family. He was able to climb the ranks through loyalty and following the Omerta, the mafia's code of silence. There were multiple times he was sentenced to trial but never testified. He was officially named underboss in 2005 before taking over in 2011. Since stepping into the role of official family boss, Domenico Cefalu hasn't done anything to put himself on the authority's radar. The flashy and dangerous style of leadership left the Gambino family when Gotti's era ended. With Domenico Cefalu, there was a higher focus on business and making money. This doesn't mean that the Gambino family hasn't been in trouble with the law. Several members of the family were involved in a racketeering scheme that led to a 2023 investigation. However, there is no evidence of Domenico Cefalu being involved with these acts. This goes to show how serious he is about maintaining a low profile as a modern mafia boss. During John Gotti's era, the Gambino family didn't keep a low profile. John Gotti would rule through fear and no one wanted to be on the receiving end of his wrath. While he didn't place the hits himself, he did order a lot of assassinations. In the present day, Mafia members try to keep all of their activity under the shadows. They don't want the public to know what they have been doing. Part of keeping a low profile means keeping violence to a minimum. 
the gruesome murders and mysterious disappearances of Mafia members from the past drew a lot of attention. As much as the violence of the Mafia has settled down over the past few decades, it hasn't completely vanished. In 2023, several members of the Gambino family were arrested after violent attempts to take over the garbage hauling and demolition industry in New York. This resulted in a total of 16 Gambino members being arrested and facing several charges, including racketeering conspiracy, extortion, union crimes, and more. New York authorities arrested Joseph Lanny, Diego Tantolo, Angelo Gratilone, James Laforte, Vito Rappa, Francesco Vicari, Salvatore Di Lorenzo, Robert Brooke, Kyle Johnson, and Vincent Miscaro. Italian authorities arrested six other associates. Each defendant could face anywhere from 20 to 180 years in prison. So, what did these Mafia figures do exactly to get put in the hot seat? Their attempt to overtake the demolition industry turned violent. Not like the old-school made men of the 1980s violent or anything. There were no hits placed, no bloody assassinations, but threats were made, people were attacked with weapons, like a hammer attack and a bottle attack, and a home was even set on fire. Authorities found evidence that proved the Gambino family had been running a racketeering enterprise that dates back to 2017. They used this enterprise to extort demolition and garbage hauling businesses. It was even discovered that they would go to extreme measures to get their money. They stole from employee benefit plans and rigged bids to get demolition jobs. When they needed to, they would threaten violence to get their money. The victims of this racketeering enterprise will not be named for their own privacy and safety. However, one victim alleges that they were extorted from 2017 to 2021. During this time, there was an incident where they were threatened with a baseball bat while making a payment. In 2020, this victim tried to stop payments. In return, the steps of their house were set on fire while their family was inside. It didn't stop there, either. One month after the fire, the victim's business was broken into and the tires were let out from their hauling truck. They also had a business associate who worked for a demolition company that the Mafia was extorting. This business associate ended up in the hospital after a hammer attack. There were three other men who owned a demolition company. It is alleged that Diego Tantalo worked for this company but was fired in 2019 due to his connections with the Mafia. The owners of this company refused to pay the Mafia $40,000. In return, Robert Brooke attacked one of the owners in Manhattan. The victim was punched several times in the face. Then there was the third victim. Vincent Minscaro and James Laforte confronted the third victim at a restaurant in Manhattan. They accused him of being a rat who was giving information to authorities. Accusing him wasn't enough to get the message across. They also smashed a bottle over his face and flipped a table. It was also alleged that Joseph Lanny threatened to burn down a restaurant in Toms River, New Jersey. To add fuel to this flame, he was caught on surveillance footage buying a gas can and trying to fill it just moments after his alleged threat took place. Compared to the violence of past made men, these incidents might seem like nothing, but these acts of violence didn't go unnoticed. There were also many other allegations piling up against these men, but it all got brought down due to an investigation that took place over several years. Federal prosecutors in New York, authorities in Italy, and the FBI worked together to bring these guys in. They got search warrants, set up wiretaps, spoke to witnesses, and took police surveillance. These arrests were not just a warning to the Gambino crime family, but to other mafias as well. Authorities are going to continue their pursuit to take down organized crime. During John Gotti's era, many mafia members were confident enough to operate in plain sight, but that slowed down over the years. After the takedown, the authorities left a clear message that any public organized crime would be dealt with. Since these arrests, the Gambino family has kept out of the public eye. However, it has been announced that the former Gambino hitman, Anthony Center, has been given the green light to be released from prison in June 2024. This notorious hitman, known as one of the Gemini twins, was linked to 11 murders. He is set for early release because he observed the rules of the institution and is believed to no longer be a threat to the public. He originally served a life sentence with an additional 20 years in 1989. The Gambino family history can be traced back to the early 1900s. After the Castellamarese War in 1931, they became one of five powerful mafia families that ruled New York. However, the crime family didn't take on the name Gambino family until Carlo Gambino became the boss in 1957. Before Carlo Gambino was the official boss, the family was run by Albert Anastasia. He was previously the boss of Murder, Inc., and many people throughout New York feared him. He also had control over the commission, which earned him a lot of enemies in the Mafia world. Albert Anastasia was murdered in 1957 in the chair at the barbershop. The hit was placed by several masked gunmen who have never been identified to this day. There have been many different theories on who placed the hit. 
Some Mafia enthusiasts have even speculated that Carlo Gambino was behind this murder. This wasn't the only murder of a Gambino crime boss. After Carlo Gambino passed away, Paul Castellano was named boss of the family. He was Carlo's top choice because he had white-collar business sense that would help maintain the power the family had. However, not everyone agreed with the way Paul Castellano ran the mob. One person in particular was John Gotti. It is believed that John Gotti organized the murder of Paul Castellano. On December 16, 1985, Paul Castellano and his underboss arrived at Sparks Steakhouse. A team of hitmen were waiting for them by the entrance. Paul was met with gunfire as he exited the vehicle, and his underboss was shot as well. John Gotti was allegedly watching down the street and drove over to see the bodies before leaving. The current boss of the Gambino family, Domenico Cefalu, has kept a low profile on his status. It hasn't even been 100% confirmed to the public that he is actually the boss. It's just widely speculated. In 2012, Frank Halley was named the underboss. In 2015, he stepped into the role of acting boss. However, in March 2019, he was shot and killed outside of his home in Tote Hill. Unlike other famous mafia murders, this killing wasn't related to a mafia tie. The shooter was a 24-year-old named Anthony Camello. There is no clear reason why Frank Calley was his target, but it's believed that Camello was a QAnon conspiracy theorist and was convinced that Calley was protected by Donald Trump, the president at the time of the murder. After the death of Frank Calley, it's believed that Domenico Cefalu took the position of family boss back. The Gambino family has changed a lot since John Gotti was running things. Like most modern mafia families, they try to keep a low profile. Law enforcement is cracking down harder on organized crime, so the mafia cannot operate in the public eye. Most recently, the Gambino family was involved in a takedown for extortion and racketeering. This was all part of a scheme to take over the garbage hauling and demolition industries and resulted in 16 Gambino members and associates getting arrested. That wraps up our video for today. Thank you for sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more Mafia Mystique content.